to uh, to be able to share this with you. I'm going to take you on a whistle stop tour through my PhD research, which completed earlier this year. Um, as ever, I'm not going to be able to fit everything in, so apologies for any gaping holes in, in what I share, but I'm happy to discuss it further afterwards. Um, so it's important to provide some context as to what why I've done what I've done in, in the next few slides, and it, it's largely driven by national parks and specifically national parks in England. And national parks have two specific um, purposes and duties. That's to conserve, enhance natural beauty, wildlife and cultural heritage, and to promote understanding and enjoyment of its special qualities with, by the public. And um, earlier on, um, well, a few years, towards the end of the uh, 2010s, a number of things were going on with the with the current government in terms of the natural environment, national parks, um, and a number of acts were taking place. And, and there were a number of things that were specifically impacting what national parks had to deliver and um, and how they would, should deliver that. And the first of that was an eight point plan uh, devised by Liz Truss. Um, who wanted? Who had, had a number of very specific things that people needed to do um, within national parks over uh, over the next five to ten years. And as part of those, those eight point plans, there was also a landscape review. So uh, delivered by um, the chap's name um, has has left me, but um, yeah, I'll come on to that. But this was sort of looking at the role of national parks, uh, their responsibilities, and what they should, what they should be delivering to the greater public. And during all of that national parks which are funded through central government funding were, were receiving cuts so real-time cuts whilst their budgets weren't being cut they weren't being raised in line with inflation so they had less money to play with um but one thing that seems to be omitted from all what well, certainly from the first few documents is the is the historic environment of national parks so they talk about the cultural heritage but they don't necessarily speak about the role of the historic environment and arguably there are no natural landscapes um in in england in probably united kingdom um and national parks uk themselves identify that cultural landscapes shaped by human activities over thousands of years which in turn create their create their unique identity and some of the key takeaway from these documents, these processes, these activities was that, that there was a clear focus on cultural heritage, so traditional practices, traditional um, land management practices, um, cultural themes within a set national park, um, a, a real drive to engage people with the natural environment. What is the natural environment? It's, you know, it's, all, it's all sitting on a stage of a historic environment. Um, the importance of protecting national parks for the future, and a deliberate need to engage young people with um, the with national parks. They are they are the inheritors of these special, unique landscapes. And by young people, six I mean sixteen to twenty four year olds. Um, and they also identify in the eight point plan and the um, the the landscapes for the the importance to maximise the use of citizen science and social media. Um, the need to engage more people with these landscapes, but none of this came with more resource for the national parks to deliver these ambitions. Um, and this was all going on at the time that David Cameron wanted to do the Big Society, which is questionably talking about just getting people to do work for free um, through volunteering and uh, other things. So there are a number of considerations and influences that shaped my research. Um, one of them was the need for external funding to deliver some of these ambitions, these goals. Um, Organisations such as the National, National Lottery Heritage, Heritage Book Fund were integral to delivering projects, engagement processes, protection, management, um, and, and citizen science community projects. Um, project development, um, yeah, so... But very often within these National Lottery Heritage Funded projects, as we've heard in other talks today, they are expert led, they are time um, constricted, um, they are dependent on delivering specific things that meet the remits of that funder. Um, they do state that you need audience insight to feed into project development, which is as integral as I'm, I'm sure we all know. Um, but there are issues with audience, traditional approaches to audience insights. Questionnaires in National Parks specifically target typical demographics they miss young people so actually we don't know what young people think about national parks and we don't know what they care about um but we do know what a lot of white middle class predominantly men think about national parks in these surveys um and also external funding identify the importance of engaging young people with these projects um similarly to national parks the historic environment sector has similar ambitions and issues with regards to engaging young people um, understanding the similar issues of understanding audiences and get, gaining a broader demographic and a, a, a richer understanding of uh, 
yeah, broader participation, uh, as well as issues around funding and, and participation. Um, interestingly, the research has shown that citizen science is typically quite poorly used in um, national parks and in the historic environment. And by citizen science, I don't mean community research projects or like specific, like take everyone out and dig together. I don't mean crowdsourcing. I mean, I mean a project that is allowing people to go out and collect data for a scientific purpose and feed it back in in a self-driven sort of, um, uh, what's the active way as opposed to a, a the yeah, active way of participation, but not specifically officer led like like the National Trust National Lottery typically National Lottery funded funded projects typically rely on. Um, interesting understand between passive and active engagement or of the historic environment and just general authorized heritage discourse. So that difference between experts telling you what you should care about, um, what you should record, why it's important, versus what people actually look at and care about and what what they think is important what their interpretation of the historic environment is and just the final point here is that at the time of delivering this project the new forest was the fourth most instagram location so the new forest is a national park in england and um, fourth fourth most instagram location in after big ben stonehenge and anfield um, there are 80 million peak users on instagram and of those 80, 800 million users um 67 percent full uh, capture that that top end of the young people demographic. So these are all things that were influencing my my thinking. And so what I aimed to do for my thesis was to undertake, understand and improve the engagement of young people with protected landscapes and their historic environments for the use of social media and citizen science. And I specifically looked at the New Forest, which is on the south coast of in England, uh, one of 10 English national parks. And I focused on English national parks because of devolution in Scotland and Wales. Um, it's got rich history. It was a royal hunting forest created in 1079 by William the Conqueror. There's archaeological remains from the Paleolithic to the Second World War, and it was integral to shipbuilding in terms of the forest, forest enclosures and things you find there. Uh, and it's a cultural landscape. The ponies create and the, the feel and design of the new forest. And I'm just going to touch, I'm not, not going to read them all out, but I'm going to touch on those middle um, points of the objectives of the researchers in this. And it's going to be very quick. Um, so what I first wanted to do was actually understand what young people in inverted commas thought of the new forest since the fourth most Instagram place in the UK. So what I was going to do is harvest data from Instagram to look at patterns and insight into what was being shared. Um, to understand the context of this, I wanted a comparative data set. So as part of a large National Lottery Heritage Funding project, the New Forest National Park undertook an audience development um, plan to inform the development of the projects they were going to deliver through their National Lottery Heritage Funding. So I had access to this audience development plan, which was a traditional questionnaire survey technique, uh, asked people questions and collected data. And based on that information, they make they develop projects. Um, to run alongside that, I harvested some in, I harvested data from Instagram, and I was particularly interested in identifying um, attributes associated with state, spatial and temporal influences, uh, user interest and understanding and appreciation, uh, and then um, contrast between image content and actually the themes that have been attributed to the posts, the text, and I was using TensorFlow and image analysis to to do that. Um, I Look to utilize, utilize methodologies by Atchison, Huffer and Graham, and Tenkin and et al. Um, and I've followed ethical considerations set out uh, by University of Stirling, uh, Evans et al., Richardson, and the University of Winchester's Ethics Board. So I'm not going to go through this in detail, but these are some of the results from the traditional survey that was undertaken by the New Forest National Park, the questionnaires. Um, interestingly, um, the sort of young people demographic draft demographic is largely missed in their data capture and that's because they went to all the places that young people don't go and collect all the data uh, they had 2500 participants and interestingly there are questions about how would how are you involved or how would you like to be involved in volunteering or participatory events and the archaeology eh, comes down at less than one percent uh, people are interested in wildlife landscape trees ponies a medieval history military history and archaeology all pretty poor showing um and then in terms of what in ways in which participants are getting involved in the new forest heritage and landscape there's a lot of walking exploring on their own photography um and then again doing archaeological tasks one percent so not not much appetite there what i did for the instagram side of things was 
create an application that harvested data from Instagram and moved them into an SQL database. And this included capturing uh, text from posts, the location where it had been added, uh, associated hashtags, number of likes, and analysis of the image content and, um, and date and time associated with that post. And over three months, I captured 52,000 posts, um, which included a whole host of different information, including uh, yeah, 67 different hashtags attached to that. The most used location being Hampshire, which is quite broad. The county that's New Forest is found in. Um, over half of the posts captured had location uh, information attached to them. Um, uh, the the TensorFlow I used it was a off the off the shelf. I didn't train it in any shape or form, so it was just whatever was in the training data set. 999 different features captured in them of those lake sites with an image of a lake was the most um, common recorded feature within folks. Um, so when what I, again, I can't go into too much detail. I'm really sorry. This is, this is fast and, and we'll brush, but looking at the hashtags, the, the, the graph you see on the top left there, that shows that the most popular hashtags attached to posts shared about the new forest in this time period. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty natural environment focused, nature, forest, autumn, horses, ponies, um, yeah, trees, summer, countryside, um, and sunset beautiful. Um, when we look, so because of the quantity of the data that I got, I categorized these and put them into different theme, thematic categories. And, and within those, the natural environment came out heads above, heads and tails above the rest. Um, and the historic environment came out with 0.3% of the, the hashtags there. And here are a few of the uh, the lead ones that the, the only historic environment hashtags that um, came through. And this is, this is Matt Mirrors. This is what, like what we see by... Uh, Bart et al. So, and Keith Ch uh, Chalice when they, they work on Twitter looking at Stonehenge archaeology is boring. Um, we also looked at, I also looked at the locational data, categorized these into themes again, um, and one of those was experience the, experience in the historic environment. Um, there were, um, yeah, 726 posts shared at historic environment locations across the time period. Um, some of these these data were captured during the summer months. Um, two of the sites within here have yeah nearly five hundred thousand visitors a year between them. Yet people aren't sharing that that posts those posts. And just very quickly in terms of the image content, um, not amazingly useful. It did provide an insight into sort of things that um, underneath church buildings, the identification of church buildings, there are a lot of historic features that were captured or historic buildings that were captured in, within there. But interestingly, it was identifying stone walls and megaliths. We don't have many stone walls and megaliths in the new forest. In fact, we have no megaliths, um, but actually it was interpreting forests and trees as, as, uh, as the, the useful insight that I will draw back on. So in, um, it, did get, it did give insight into how users were doing, um, what users were doing, um, shape, um, sharing their and perhaps their values, what it, what it is and what, what they're not sharing in terms of the historic environment, um, what is and what is not acknowledged in their posts, a whole host of other information that I can't go into. But um, basically, I'm not going to get time to go through all of this, but what I did based on that interpretation was develop a citizen science project which looked at recording historic tree graffiti. And the idea is to incorporate some of the patterns I saw in the Instagram data, some of the interpretations taken from the initial, the original audience development work and develop a project that uh, had a need because it's fragile, climate change had a purpose. It was, um, there's no record of the historic trigger beating in the new forest. And um, it had been co-designed in the form that it had been fed into by um, Instagram interpretations. Um, so that was that. Ran two parallel projects, which I won't go into detail, but one was ran specifically in Instagram and one was delivered by the New Forest National Park Authority to look at different approaches of delivering these projects. And um, one looked at working on Inst people either submitting results on, Inst um, on a website or on Instagram specifically and had speci specifically targeted promotions through Instagram. And one was promoted by the National Park and they could submit uh, findings um, themselves. Crux of it, 
the Instagram project saw zero participation whatsoever, and it wasn't a viable methodology in terms of engaging people with that citizen science project. However, it did demonstrate that there was passive engagement with the project. So we, we the, the green highlights I can show you there is the number of likes that the viewers on Instagram um, who received these posts, who were, who were young people, uh, in likes, shares, comments, clicks, um, and there is a high level of passive engagement, arguably, but zero levels of active engagement. In contrast, Project 2 saw really good active engagement with um, uh, 76 submissions shared over three months, but none of those participants were young people. So there were issues there with highlighting traditional approaches to um, audience engagement that national parks managing bodies deliver their work in. Um, interestingly, a project delivered as part of that national lottery project, the Historic Routes and Pathways project, which was officer-led, required training, required management and coordination, had 13 participants and um, and had a fixed time in terms of funding and, and delivery, uh, did not see comparable levels of participation that this citizen science project saw. So there's there's benefits to be had and, and delivered um and interestingly there was quite a high uptake between 26 to 24 year olds who aren't typically engaged in these projects and that that is another, another thing to, to think about whole host of influences to consider social media etiquette young people tend to have two social media accounts one's public one's private they share things on public ones if it doesn't get enough likes they delete it that they share things on the private ones and you don't know what they shared. So if they took part, if they engaged with it, I wouldn't have known about. Um, there, really the crux of it is actually what we're looking at with the post shared on Instagram, however, is that it's an old demographic of people sharing posts in the new forest. And there's a whole host of reasons that I can't go into for that. But actually, um, the comparison seen in the initial data analysis and the national lottery data as well support the, this idea. Um, so maybe it's an aging population on, on Instagram as opposed to the young people that we we ascribe to social media. Um, uh, there, yeah, there's diff there are ish traditional approaches to engaging young people. Miss them. Um, Instagram is not an appropriate platform for using um, to use should organisations wish to understand and actively engage young people. But we did observe. I did observe passive engagement. Um, uh, but there's benefits of combining the natural environment and the historic environment, both for participation levels and for changing the narratives as, as well as self-driven participation. Citizen science in the natural environment is an everyday thing. They are absolutely crushing it. And if we can combine that, we can steal some of their participants, would be my argument. Um, and Instagram offers a quick and affordable approach to insight uh, in terms of uh, users of these environments. My research has basically concluded in that actually for managing organisations like, like National Park Authorities, like Forestry England, who I've worked for, if you want to understand um, what people are doing, what people are sharing, and it can be a really good complementary data set by purchasing these data um, through providers and identifying patterns, uh, values, understanding, you can use this to track change, you can use this to develop projects, it can complementary, be complementary to more uh, targeted uh, audience insight and then it's circular so you can repurchase it and see how those projects have influenced and changed patterns. I'm not going to read all of this out but um, I happily chat through it all in a moment or afterwards over a beer um, but yeah basically I've, I've said a lot of it um, already I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much.